And we're going back to Georgia now, where voters are casting their ballots in that Senate runoff today, while Raphael Warnock is stepping up his attacks against Herschel Walker about his gaffes and scandals. They have kept piling up, but Warnock with Joy Reid last night and Walker on Fox News. We know that he is unprepared. We know he's unqualified. And it gives me no pleasure to say this, but as a preacher, I'm in the business of truth telling. He's unfit to represent the people of Georgia in the United States Senate. Um, you got to get out and vote because if you don't vote, you're going to get more Chuck Schumer and also uh, President Biden because Senator Warner has shown that he's always going to vote with them. Joining me now, former White House Press Secretary to President Obama, Robert Gibbs, Politico playbook author and White House correspondent Eugene Daniels, and Democratic strategist Tom Bonnier, CEO of the data firm Target Smart. So, Tom, let me go to you first on the data, because what are you seeing in the modeling from the early voting? Who's coming out more? As you would expect, Democrats turn out more on early vote. That's the interesting thing is, as you say, we would expect that Democrats have an advantage. We saw that in the November general election where Democrats had a big advantage. You know, our model there was about eight points more Democratic. In this runoff, even with this compressed time period, it's become even more Democratic. We're modeling it at about plus 13 Democratic. So you've seen about a five-point bump for Democrats, even though it's a smaller number of people voting early. But what about the youth vote? There had been some concern among Democrats and some hopes from Republicans that young people are not turning out as they might have. Certainly when we look at the work that both candidates need to do on Election Day, even though the Walker campaign has a steeper hill to climb, Democrats, Senator Warnock's campaign, are looking at today and counting on the youth vote to make up for some of these numbers that have been slightly behind in the early vote. So, Robert Gibbs, when you look at this today, uh, what are you hearing from Georgia? What do you think is happening? And, you know, it's notable that the two party leaders, President Biden and Donald Trump, were not physically there. They were remotely doing doing calls and doing a remote rally, but neither of them, because of their lack of popularity with certain constituencies, mm -hmm. neither of them were able to go. Yeah, I think a lot of us have been uh, refreshing the Twitter feed of Tom to try to figure out how he's modeling Georgia. Uh, I do think there is a sense of confidence among most Democrats uh, about the outcome uh, that they think will happen later tonight. And I think for Democrats, it's important because there's a practical, a political, and a psychological impact to this race. The practical is to control the apparatus of the United States Senate, not having it be 50-50, not having its committee structure be 50-50. Politically, it, Georgia is a Im really important state for 2024, and it's a really important state uh, for Democrats in the future and for the future of the Democratic Party. Psychologically, this is going to give, could give Democrats momentum heading into 2023 and 2024 with a little wind at their back. So it's a huge night for Democrats. Uh, and I think many are going into today feeling confident, but needing to see that election day vote come out. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know if you were seeing, but Javon Hilliard was there in Fulton County earlier, and there was nobody behind him. And the, the, the polling people said that only about a hundred and a quarter people had turned out all day. And we're, you know, hours into the voting today, so that it was not a good turnout at all, election day turnout, and the weather was fine. Um, Eugene, The Washington Post is pointing out, importantly today, that the Georgia runoff system was actually created by segregationist Denmark Groover in the 1960s to try to dilute the black vote. How is it being felt today? Yeah, this is something that when you talk to activists, advocates, and, and strategists, organizers on the ground in Georgia, which I did earlier this year, um, they bring this up a lot, right? They talk about how um, this kind of runoff system, first of all, and, and just the historic um, way that segregation um, dismantled and took away the power of black folks in the South. And they feel, say they've been feeling that in Georgia forever. And then they point to this as Georgia using this process that was, you know, Denmark Groover eventually said and admitted um, was intended to make sure that black people's vote was, was suppressed. Um, they point to that as something why it should they should get rid of it in the in in um, in that state. It's something that doesn't seem like uh, Georgia, uh, the leaders in Georgia want to get rid of, but it's something that people still feel. And I, you know, and I will say just to add on, you know, Republicans are also um, feeling 
um, less confident about Georgia than they were. Robert talked about Democrats feeling good. Republicans are feeling a lot less good. I talked to quite a few of them over the last few days who I talked to before um, the runoff started, and they felt pretty good about their chances, and they felt good about a runoff um, going to uh, War um, Walker. They don't feel that way anymore. So that does tell you something about kind of the things that people are seeing um, on the ground and in their own data. And Robert, you talked about 2024. Uh, one, you know, factor there is the Senate map is terrible for the Democrats the next time around in 2024. You've got, you know, West Virginia, Montana, Ohio, seats up that are going to be hard to hold, and it would really be critical if they can hold this seat, right? Absolutely. I mean, grabbing as many seats ahead of that 24 cycle is going to be really important. And, and look, I think it would prove again that Georgia truly is a purple state, which is important for Democrats going forward. Uh, we know already that the Biden administration and, and President Biden uh, have, want to push Georgia forward into the early nominating process. So this tonight really kind of cements that for a place like Georgia in a way that, quite frankly, has supplanted North Carolina as something that Democrats looked at, at you know, as, as a growth state maybe 10 years ago. Um, didn't the secretary of state in Georgia kind of put the kibosh on Georgia moving up in the calendar? I mean, is that, is that going to be hard to pull off? It, it, it certainly will. But I, I think, look, I think psychologically, uh, having Georgia that far ahead and, and, and having Democrats think of Georgia as that important of a state, I, I think is still a big deal. And Tom, are you going to be looking tonight at these rural counties like Cherokee and Forsyth and <laughs> whether Walker can really run up the vote there. Yeah, I mean, as a viewing tip, that's what I'll be looking at. Those are the counties that tend to count fast. And if you see that Walker is running behind his percent from November, he's in big trouble. That's a great tip. Thank you so much. That's why we, we love talking to you and to Gibbs and Eugene Daniels. Uh, thanks so much. We'll all be watching tonight.